the most important thing is to develop a passion for reading. And it doesn't matter how you do it. Just, you know, read what you love until you love to read. And then uh, the whole world that kind of opens up for you. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. So good to have you here. Today's episode is the one to listen to if you want to get inspired to read more books. We all know that reading is good for us and that books can be life-changing, but so many of us struggle to make reading a habit. So today's episode is jam-packed with information and tips on how to read more and to become a more effective reader. Our guest today is Alex Wachowski. Alex Wachowski is a book reviewer, writer, and podcaster who's all about helping people read more, sharing key lessons and reviews. He's the creator of Alex and Books and is the author of Learn to Love Reading. Hello, Alex. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. I'm so excited to have you. So let's start with your story. How did you become a book influencer and what inspired you to start this journey? Yes. So I started back in 2017. So this is, I was uh, towards the end of my college years. And uh, I was surprisingly, I wasn't like a big reader, like, you know, middle school, high school, I hated books because you kind of forced to read all these boring books. Then like halfway through college, I had this management professor who was super successful. He worked at IBM for like 30 years and he walked in first day of class. He has like a suit on and a Rolex. So I'm like, oh, this guy means business. And the first assignment he gave us was to read this book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. And up until that point, I haven't read any self-help books. And I was like completely blown away by this book that, you know, it was super educational, but also super entertaining. And that really got me, like, really opened my eyes. I'm like, oh, if I could learn, like, communication and social skills from a book, like, what else can I learn from reading? And the answer was, like, everything. Like, anything mm-hmm. you want to learn, there's a book out there that you could read that will help you in life. So after reading that book, I got, like, addicted to reading, want to read as many books as possible. And I saw, like, this was a time where social media was really uh, coming up and all these influencers and, like, video gaming influencers and, like, beauty influencers. And I noticed that there weren't any like educational or like book influencers. So I'm like, you know what? This seems like a really silly idea, but let me just start posting books on Instagram. So that's literally why I started to do. I'd read a book, then i post about it and be like, oh, here's why I liked about this book and here are a couple of key lessons. Mm -hmm. And like over time, I started gaining more and more followers and people were like, oh, I really enjoy this book recommendation. And then over the years, you know, the audience kept growing where it went from, you know, Uh, publishers being like, oh, I'll send you free books to like, oh, we'll pay you to post about our books. And then, you know, it took, uh, this is a short story, but it took several years. But yeah, now I'm like a full-time book influencer. So a pretty, pretty fun and exciting journey. That's amazing. And then my first question is, is there ever a time where you got sick of reading books? Like you're like, I've had enough. I'm tired of this as my job. (laughs) So you'd be surprised. But yeah, I would say, especially in the early years, I felt like I was reading I was reading a lot of books and I was, you know, posting on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube and TikTok and I was doing all this by myself. And it wasn't like, this is still like uh, in the early years. So it was definitely like a grind. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. I'm doing all this work and it's not paying off. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple of times actually, like I felt like I quit. But then I thought to myself, okay, if I quit, what am I going to do? I'm just going to get like a nine to five job. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to still read on the weekends and try (laughs) to grow my social media audience on uh, on the weekends. So I'm like, well, if I'm just going to do that anyway, it makes sense to keep uh, you know, keep working on this so social media content and try to get to that full time uh, content creator level as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there were definitely a couple of hard times where I'm like, all right, I'm kind of burnt out of uh, reading. I think that's pretty common to a lot of people. Like sometimes you might read too much and burn out. Uh, so, so yeah, it happened to me too. Yeah, because when I think when when content creating is your job, you, sometimes you're doing it as a job. Like you're reading books because it's your job to review books, and it must get a yeah. little bit like it, sometimes the fun is taken out of it. But you seem to be doing this for a long time, so yeah. So uh, I definitely you know been I'm, in March is going to be seven years, so definitely been doing it for a long time, and I learned a lot of lessons. So yeah, some people say, oh, it's so cool to get paid to read books, but I think one mistake I made early was saying yes to too many opportunities. So it would be like this uh, leadership book or this business book, but it was just like not an interesting book. So I was like forcing <laughs> myself to read it just to get paid for it. And I would say that's uh, one thing that kind of led to burnout. Like if you're reading a lot of books that you're not enjoying, of course you're not going to enjoy reading. It's kind of mm-hmm. like you know in high school where they assign you all these Shakespeare or all these old books. Like they're just not interesting to kids. So kids don't like reading. The same thing's for adults. Like if you're not enjoying what you're reading, you, you're not you're just not going to like the books that you're reading. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about how many books have you read? Do you know the number? Yeah, so in the past few years, uh, it's close to like 400 now. Uh, last year was the most. Amazing. Yeah, it was 70 or 75 books last year. Wow. Even though it sounds impressive, I think I'm going to start going the opposite direction. Um, because like reading a book or two a week, it sounds great, it sounds impressive, but that you're not giving yourself enough time to actually digest the book, go through the book. Mm-hmm. And like what I tell people is like, you know, if you read a life-changing book, you want to go back and reread that book instead of jumping to the next one. Because it's like watching a great movie. If you yeah. watch like Inception or The Godfather, you want to rewatch that movie two or three times because there's so much stuff you missed. Uh, same thing is for great books. So I'm kind of following my own advice and I'm going to try to read fewer books, but better books. Yeah, yeah. Like let yourself marinate in the information a little bit more. I think that's Yes, amazing. yes, exactly. So tell us, how has reading changed your life after reading so many books? I would say all aspects of my life have gotten better because I realized like, like what parts do, of my life do I want to work on? And it's like all of it. So like uh, when it came to like fitness and the gym, like I used to be a lot skinnier. So I started reading fitness and diet books on like how to put up muscle. I used to be very like antisocial. So I started reading books like uh, how to win friends and influence people and books about small talk to become like a better speaker and communicator. I uh, read a lot of books about like writing to, uh, you know, become a better writer. And that really helped grow like my audience on t- uh, Twitter and it's like basically anything I want to learn about or even like dating and relationships. Like, you know, uh, I was single, pretty bad at dating. So I started reading dating books. Then I got into a relationship and I started reading a lot of relationship books. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I've been with my girlfriend for three years. So I'm reading like, uh, you know, books about marriage and things like that. So like anything you want to learn in life, there's a book out there. And uh, that's what I recommend doing. That's amazing. But do, do you find yourself like teaching the people around you everything that you've learned? Because you must be like a wealth of knowledge. (laughs) Yes. So I think that's why I enjoy creating content so much because I read this amazing book and I'm like, guys, I got to tell you about this book. I got to tell you about the lessons I learned. You know, I talk to my girlfriend every day. So I always tell like, oh, here's this book I read and here's what I learned. Uh, So she's always like, you know, the number one like student. Aww. <laughs> it's like you're reading those relationship books and like spreading it to her. Does, yeah. does she accept it with open arms or is she sometimes like you're reading too much? <laughs> <laughs> she, she's definitely very open. And like okay. a lot of times uh, we might read the same book. So okay, uh, we just read this book, uh, Nonviolent Communication uh, Together. Uh, and that's, that's a really great book about how to become like a better communicator and like express yourself without being like offensive or like, yeah, getting the other person to shut down. That was a really great read. Um, so great tip for couples, like read books together and you have like your own little mini book club. Are there any type of books that you tend to gravitate towards? Definitely the nonfiction, self-improvement. Uh, I used to be very big in the productivity book space. Um, but I think once you read, you know, 20 or 30 books on one topic, you're like, okay, I, I, feel, I feel like I got it, like kind of, I got this part down yeah. of my life. It's like now let me work on like reading more like finance or investing books to, you know, improve my life in that area. Mm-hmm. So I, I think every few months, like the big topic I'm trying to learn like changes. Mm, yeah. You're kind of guided by what you need in that moment, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Time for a short break. Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Whether you are a bride, wedding guest, or simply seeking everyday smoothing, Honey Love is the go-to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer have to feel like you're suffocating while wearing effective shapewear. Honey Love's lingerie-inspired designs make you feel cute while using breathable fabric that keeps you nice and cool. Plus, you don't have to worry about it rolling down thanks to the flexible boning hidden in the side seams. I have the crossover bra and superpower brief. The bra is the most comfortable yet supportive wire-free bra I've tried and is also really flattering. Their superpower series are designed to sculpt and smooth without squeezing your natural curves. Trust that you'll get a boost of confidence wearing these. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash TLL. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off. It's honeylove.com slash TLL. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. So please support our show and tell them we sent you. Shape your life with Honey Love. Awesome. So how did you begin your reading habit? And then how, how do you stay consistent and committed to it? 
I think with any habit, especially reading, uh, you want to start as small as possible. So there's a great book, Atomic Habits and Tiny Habits, and they and they talk about uh, the two minute rule. So like any habit you want to do, even reading, uh, just do it for two minutes a day. Because especially with reading, the hardest part is just sitting down and getting started. You know, if you tell someone like, "Oh, go read for two hours a day uh, today," they're like, "Impossible!" Like I don't have the time or energy for that. If you tell someone like, "Oh, can you go read for two minutes today?" They're like. Yeah, like no matter how busy you are, you can find two minutes. And once you sit down and just open up that book, chances are you're going to really enjoy the book and you end up reading like 10 or 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. So I would say definitely start small. Another uh, great tip is to pick short books. Uh, I remember my, um, someone posted on Twitter about this great book and I'm like, okay, I'm going to order it. And it was literally a thousand pages <laughs> like long. I'm like, there's no way I'm getting through this book. It's going to take me like two months. Yeah. And so I immediately returned it. So I would say definitely start with a short book and a lot of uh, books that changed my life were like 200 pages or less. Yeah, I think those uh, two tips are great to start with. So, you know, pick a book that's short, uh, pick a book that, you know, you could apply immediately. So, you know, if you just got promoted to management position, that's when you want to start reading a management book. Or if you're in the market to like buy a house or sell a house, that's when you want to read like a negotiation book. Um, you know, if you just got married, that's when you want to read books about like, you know, marriage and relationships. So yeah, start with the two minute rule, uh, pick short books and uh, yeah, read the books that will help you like right away. What is your current reading routine? Like when do you do it? How often are you reading? Yeah, so my uh, guideline is uh, read early in the a.m. or late in the p.m. So I like to read like early in the day before I start work, before like I start anything else. You know, when it's warm out, I'll go outside to the park or outside my house. That way I get, you know, sunlight and also get my reading done. But now that it's winter, you know, I'll just, uh, you know, try to do a little bit of reading before like I pick up my, my phone or look at email or social media. So I think that's a great tip for people just before, you know, all the chaos of the day or work, read early in the morning. Or uh, late in the PM. So like this is, you know, maybe before going to bed, if you want to like wind down, um, this is like usually when people have time for themselves, especially like parents, you know, the kids are away in bed and you finally have some peace and quiet. Like that's when you want to do some reading. And it's a great way to just like get, you know, tired and like relax before bed. Uh, so I, I either read early in the morning or late at night. Nice. Are you a paper book person or do you also do ebooks and digital? Yeah, yes. So I like paper books uh, because I spend a lot of time on my phone and my laptop, like creating content and social media. So I like to like disconnect and, um, you know, read physical books. Also, I like to highlight and take notes in books. But also I, I do like every now and then um, have an ebook on my phone. So that way, if I don't have a book, I can read it there. And then I also like audiobooks when I'm like commuting or working out. Uh, so that's a great way to like read on the go. Yeah. Do you have any types of books that you only read on audiobooks versus like paper? Because I know audiobooks, it's hard to digest the information like do you have a suggestion on i guess type of books or a routine routine with audiobooks yeah so with audiobooks i would say either um you know especially if it's like a storybook or a lot of books have extra bonus content in the audiobook where you won't find the physical book like uh, can't hurt me by david goggins comes to mind where it has a lot of bonus content in the audiobook oh. uh, so that's the, like i love the physical book uh, so then i got the audiobook to like and a way to like reread the book oh. and you can also go the other way around if there's like an audiobook that you love and you're like oh this this book has so much wisdom i need to get the physical book and take notes on it uh so i think that's a great like reread strategy if you find like an amazing print book get the audiobook or if you find an amazing audiobook get the print book mm, i see so you talk about taking notes in your books a lot and i'm really impressed at like your i you make your own table of contents right i, I yeah. love that tell us what are your techniques and tips for like, you know, remembering what you read and capturing that information from each book. The quick strategy for taking notes, uh, I call it a uh, read. So you want to read the book, uh, extract the key lessons, apply those lessons, and then uh, like debrief the results and see like, w- what have you learned? What can you apply? And then when it comes to like remembering what you're reading, definitely uh, taking notes after you finish like your reading session to try to uh, summarize the lessons that you learned and you especially want to put it in your own words. You don't want to just like copy like quotes word for word. Uh, you want to summarize it for yourself. And another super helpful tip is like before you pick up a book, take a take a minute just to think about like, oh, like what lessons have I learned so far? I heard this good quote like uh, memory isn't repeated exposure, it's repeated recall. Uh, so you have to put your mind to work and you have to ask like, okay, what have I learned or what have what did I learn last time from this book? And then also helps to like review the information you learn. So I think the stat is like people forget 70% of what they've learned the next day. Mm. So it helps to like, 
you know, after you finish a book, maybe go back the next day and just review a couple of your notes. And then maybe a week later, go back to it and review your notes. And then also helps to like uh, share what you learn. So like for me, after I read a book, I'll, you know, pick out three lessons and then uh, share them on like my newsletter or social media mm-hmm. or like tell a friend. So I would say, yeah, if you want to like remember more of what you're reading, one of the best ways to do that is to teach other people what you, you've learned. So, you know, tell your partner, or tell a friend or, you know, tell your audience on social media what you learned about. And I think that's a great way to kind of uh, digest and remember uh, more of their information. Yeah, that's a really good tip. So when you're debriefing like what you learned from the book, do you are you writing it in the book or do you have like a separate note taking system for all your books? So as I'm reading the book and if I come across, you know, I have my highlighter and a pen. So if I come across like an interesting quote or piece of advice, I'll like highlight it. Then I'll take like the front cover of the book and I'll create my own table of contents. So I'll write down, you know, page 13, a great productivity tip about, you know, organization or page 26, the code framework. So that way you create your own table of contents. Then after I finish the book, I'll write out all like the key lessons I've learned. And then on the other side of the back cover, I'll uh, ask myself, how can I actually apply those lessons and turn it to like actionable advice? Because the whole point of like reading a book is to figure out which lessons are important and then how can I apply them? Because like, if you think about it, if you read 10 books about, you know, how to gain muscle, but you never go to the gym, like reading the books is not going to make you stronger or bigger. Uh, it's actually like reading is kind of like the easy part of the equation. If you think about it, it's actually taking action and applying what you've learned um, to your life. That's the hard part, but that's the part that gets you the results. Yeah, definitely. So at the front of the book, you have that table of contents to reference your highlights. And then at the yes. back of the book, that's where you say you put your lessons and then action steps. Like Yes, takeaways. exactly. And then are you, do like you're filling in the front and the back as you're reading, like as you go, not after you finish the book, then you put in your takeaways. Yeah. So I, I do it after each like reading session. Right. Some people like to like stop is like, oh, this is a really great quote. Let me stop, you know, write, write down the page number and then go back to your reading. Or some people would just like to stay in the flow. It's like, okay, I'm reading and just highlighting, reading, highlighting. And then after I'm done uh, with that, then let me take down some notes. Yeah. So either or works. Uh, I've heard from people you know, some people just like to stop and read, uh, stop and write. Some people like to keep reading and then write at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, you must have a lot of takeaways as you read. And I know that you read a lot of books, right? So how are you, you know, making sure that you have enough time, I guess, to, to apply all of these lessons? Because sometimes like building a habit takes, you know, at least three weeks, right? So, so what is your process to apply these lessons? So what I like to say is like if you could pick out like two or even three things from a book, like that that that's a win. Because yeah, nonfiction books are like just packed with so much knowledge and information. It could take you like, you know, a whole year to to apply everything that you learned from it. Right. So you really just pick out the two or three most important lessons from it, figure out how you could apply it to your life. And then you, you just got to, you know, start working on it. So whether it's like a communication book or like social book that talks about a recent tip was like whenever you think of someone in a positive manner, you want to email them or text them right away. Yeah. So then I'm like, OK, for this okay. week, I put in my notes that, you know, whenever I have like a positive thought or something, I just want to DM them or send it to them. Uh, so that's like my habit or like activity for that week. Mm. So I kind of just pick one important a habit or action you want to do and just set that as like your goal for the week. And then if you do that every single week, that's 52 habits in a year. And wow. like that's that that could be like a massive change to someone. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, I would focus on, you know, don't try to apply everything at once because that's just way overwhelming. It's like too much. If you just pick one week and you do that and you do that every week for a year, like that'll be an incredible uh, transformation. Right. So you're saying you're picking a different action or habit each week to apply? Yeah, one week it'll be like, um, you know, I read about um, some of the benefits of doing like a caffeine detox. So I did no caffeine for a week. Mm -hmm. Then I read about, uh, you know, going gluten free. So I went gluten free for a week. Or like um, Huberman talks about, you know, get sunlight in your eyes every morning. So like I did that for a week. And then if I like really like the habit, then I'll like add it to to my life or it becomes like a part of my life. Yeah. Everything from like, you know, flossing to, you know, yeah, sending nice texts to people. And then those habits just become part of your life. And then you don't have to like think about doing it. It just becomes like process. It's like a giant human experiment. I love it. It, it's yeah. <laughs> that's so great. You're just like optimizing yourself and your life. Yeah. I guess you must have tried so many things by now. Like what would be the most impactful? Like the top three that you're like, oh, these have stuck and I recommend it to everyone. I think the first one, uh, so from that book, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, like there's just the importance of getting, you know, 
eight hours of sleep consistently, uh, that's a complete game changer. Like you could have a bad diet, you could not exercise, uh, but if you're not if you're getting your sleep, like you'll still be like like a high performer. So that's definitely been one. Two before I uh, injured my knee, I would go like uh, jogging every morning. That way I could like get sunlight and also exercise. Um, so that, that was like a two for one. So yeah, trying try to exercise in the morning or just trying to go outside every morning uh, has been like huge on like my mental health and just like overall mood booster. And then three, I, I guess would be like my reading habit. So mm-hmm. either reading early in the morning or late before bed, that's like really stuck with me. And um, yeah, like the more books I read, the more I learned, the more I learned, the better person I became. Uh, yeah. So I think those are three uh, habits everyone should have. Yeah, this is very inspiring. I'm sure people already are like, oh, I have to read. I have to read more. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's the goal. Make reading uh, cool again. Exactly. Well, how long are you reading in your reading sessions? Like, do you give yourself like a time limit or do you just let yourself go wild? Like, however long I feel. Yeah. Uh, so I would say I still follow like the two minute rule. Okay. So if I just sit down and read for two minutes, I, I consider that an accomplishment, like a win. Nice. Because uh, some days are busier than others. But sometimes like, uh, literally, like last week, I was like, okay, you know, it's kind of late. I'm just going to sit down and read for two minutes. And then I ended up reading for like an hour and a half because the book was like so good. Mm-hmm. So it definitely varies. It could be, you know, as little as like 15 or 20 minutes a day to sometimes like, uh, yeah, earlier this week, I think I spent like three or four hours reading. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. So it really just depends on like the book. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, just tell yourself, I'm just going to sit down and read for two minutes and you never know how long you might end up reading. Yeah, that's great. I love the two minute rule. How can you tell when a book is worth reading? You know, someone might, you know, if someone has an interest in an area, there's so many books, right? So what is your recommendation on finding the right book for you to read? I call it a, yeah, a read it when you need it. So you want to think about like, what's an area of your life you want to improve on or what's the problem you're having and try to find a book that will solve that, you know, problem or, or uh, will help you in that area of life. So Quick story, when I was in college and I really got into reading, I'm like, oh, these uh, management and leadership books are like bestsellers. So let me start reading a lot of those. Uh, but the problem was that I was an intern in college. Right, you, know, you don't really need I it. didn't have any employees, no one to manage. Yep. So although these books were great, I couldn't use any of the information. So it was actually pretty boring to me. What I should have been doing is like reading marketing books. So that way I could get like a full-time job or, you know, become better a marketer because that was like my goal. So yeah. So you want to find books that you could apply like today or in the near future, and they'll be just a lot more interesting to you. You know, I was never really interesting interested in books about like copywriting, but then you know I, I started creating uh, my own course, and I'm like, okay, now I got to figure out how to write good copy. I was never like huge fan of uh, English, but then when I started creating content on social media, I'm like, oh, I have to become a better writer. So I really got into like writing books. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you have a goal in mind, something you want to get better at, you know, read books on that. Like for me. I love basketball, so I enjoyed like reading books by like Kobe Bryant or like LeBron James and like learning about them and their life. But someone that loves soccer won't love those books as much. So follow your natural curiosity is another one. I remember one day I was watching the news and uh, the top story was like this guy escaped from North Korea. I'm like, you know, I hear a lot about North Korea, but I never actually like read about it or learned about it. Like, let me check out a book about it. And there was a good book, uh, The Aquariums of Pyongyang, which was this guy that was in North Korea and his family got sent to like this uh, labor camp. And then he, he actually escaped North Korea and he tells like this whole crazy story. And I'm like, and I, I read that book in like two days. It was like so good and like so like, you know, just like crazy story. That was just me following my own natural curiosity. So just whatever topics you're interested in, if you're interested in airplanes, you know, read about that. If you're interested in swimming, read about that. Just follow your, like, your own natural uh, curiosity. Love it, love it. So read it when you need it and then follow your curiosity. Time for another quick break. This episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V, an award-winning hair care line founded by the Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston got tired of the same struggle we all face, choosing between hair products that work and ones that are actually good for us. Now that dilemma is history. Enter Lola V, clean plant-powered products for every hair type and texture. And here's a treat for you. For a limited time, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order at lolav.com. Just use the code TLL at checkout. I've been using Lola V's restorative shampoo, conditioner, and intensive repair treatment ever since we moved into the new house, and it makes my showers feel like a spa-like experience. I love the clean aesthetic of the packaging, as well as the natural plant-based ingredients. 
Unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at lolav.com. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use the code TLL at checkout. That's 15% off your order at lolavie.com with promo code TLL. Please note you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. So please support our show and tell them we sent you. Do you have a process for figuring out like what book to read in terms of like reading reviews or what's your process of like researching the books? Yeah, for sure. So I say like, you know, people spend, you know, five minutes watching like movie trailers or looking up movie reviews before they watch like a two hour Netflix show. Like, does it make sense to spend five minutes, you know, reviewing a book before you spend like five hours reading it? I think that's like a good investment to make. So what I recommend is uh, check out the book on Amazon or Goodreads, see the reviews. And uh, specifically, you want to avoid the five-star reviews because those are usually written by people that just like love the author or friends or family. And then also avoid the one-star reviews because those are people that just say like, oh, I got the wrong book or my book came damaged. Uh, that has nothing to do with actually the content of the book. So you want to read like the two, three, and four-star reviews uh, of people that actually write like, okay, this is what the book is about. Here's like who is it for and what you'll learn from it. So that's a good way to like go about reading the reviews. I also like uh, have this uh, concept like the podcast strategy. So a lot of these authors go on these podcasts to promote their book. And if you listen to like a whole podcast with an author and they're talking about the book for like two or three hours and you love that podcast, that's a pretty strong sign that you'll love their book mm-hmm. and you want to like dive deeper into it. And then like if you do like pick up a book and you're not sure if you should quit it or not, uh, I have the three strikes rule. So like in baseball, you get you know three chances to hit a home run. Here, you want to give a book uh, three chances or three chapters to like win you over. So like Mm -hmm. read the introduction, the first chapter, and then maybe like one more chapter in the book. And if it hasn't won won you over by then, it's like you gave it a fair chance and now it's it's time to like drop it and uh, pick up a new one. And what I like to say is like you want to quit boring books to make room for brilliant ones because there are literally like over a million books published every year. You're never going to get through all of them. So you might as well like put the ones that are not interested or not interesting to you or helpful like away. And Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's a bad book. Like a book that changed my life I might give it to a friend and they might not find it like interesting or relevant. And that's totally fine. There's a lot of like best selling or classic books that you might not enjoy. And that's totally cool. Like, don't be afraid to quit a book, even if it is like a bestseller or a classic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great tip because I know a lot of people feel guilty for quitting books. They're like, oh, I haven't actually read it until I finished it front to back, but it's okay to quit. <laughs> so I like it. Your, your three strikes rule. Yeah, and that's very common that people get stuck on a book and they quit reading altogether. So it's better to quit one book than to quit reading altogether. Mm. So yeah, if you're not interested in a book, quit it. Or if you if you don't like that quitting mentality because you know quitting has like a negative connotation or association to it, I like to say put it on hold because it might be right book but wrong time. Like those management books, you know, maybe in the future when I have like an employee or a big team, that's when it's time to go back and start reading those management books again. And right, but right now I'm putting those books on hold and I might revisit them later. And the best thing about books is they'll always be happy, you know, to see you when you come back, whether it's <laughs> a year later or 20 years later. Yeah, I love that. Are there any books that you talked about, like, you know, book reviews? Are there any books that you find are like, really underrated like this book has terrible reviews online but like you loved it or vice versa like this book is loved by so many people but you didn't think it was that great (laughs) any books that come to mind there's a good psychology book i thought was underrated it's called the elephant in the brain and it talks about how a lot of things people do there's usually like a double motive behind it so it talks about like a lot of people that donate to charity i think it's only one percent of charitable donations are anonymous So it's like people donate to charity because it seems like they're doing good. And that's part of it. But it's also because they like the, you know, recognition or the prestige around it. Like they want the name on their building, Mm -hmm. uh, you know. So that's a very interesting book about like, like people do good things, but there's usually like an underlining reason uh, behind why they do it. Uh, So if you're interested in psychology, that's really good. It's called The Elephant in the Brain? Yeah. Okay. Another good book I liked was uh, The Fine Art of Small Talk. I think Deborah Fine. And this is a good book. Uh, and a lot, like a lot of people say like, oh, I hate small talk or it's like useless. But small talk is the icebreaker for deep conversations. Like you can't just go up to someone and, and be like, 
uh, what, what's you know what's your biggest purpose in life or what's your biggest regret? Like that's too deep of a question, like too much of an ask. Like you need to learn how to have small talk. Like when you interact with like you know um, the barista or the person at the bar or like something like that, all of the conversations are like small talk or like. You know, if you're stuck in the elevator with someone, you want to know how to communicate so you have less of those uh, awkward moments and conversations. So I would say those are two good books, uh, like not, not a lot of people know about, but are what you're checking out. Yeah. Since we're on that topic and you mentioned this was an area you improved at a lot, like what are some tips for small talk that you've learned? Like the the best tips? Definitely uh, you, you want to uh, ask more like open-ended questions. Not just like, you know, how's your day? Like, like that, you could just respond good or fine. Like that's not as great, you know, and you, you want to kind of frame it in like a positive, like, oh, hey, John, like, you know, any highlights from today or like, you know, any any uh, funny moments from work today or uh, something like that where you want to frame the question where you're directing them towards a positive direction because you don't want to ask them, how's your, you know, injured uh, knee doing or, or some, something like that. Um, so, so definitely like a friendly, open-ended question. You you want to see like the response to it, like their body language, like if they're turning away from you or they're kind of closed down. Maybe they're not in the like, you know, in the right frame of mind to like have a like deep conversation or something like that. Or maybe they're busy. You want to definitely call back to their name. This is a great lesson from How to Win Friends and Influence People that you know a, a person's name is the sweetest sound uh, to their ears. So definitely like remember the name. Uh, and then also, if you go, if you go think back to your last conversation or anything you want to, or anything you talked about before, and you bring that up, they'll be like, "Oh, they actually like remember that. Like that's really cool of them." So I think those are a couple like small helpful tips. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, okay, so I'm curious: Do you have a system for keeping track of the books you read, or is it just like like a list somewhere? <laughs> Yeah, so, so I, I just keep uh, a track like on Goodreads. So okay. like what book I'm currently reading, like I finished it. Okay. So that's kind of the simplest way. But I know like some people aren't a fan of like Goodreads or Amazon. So Storygraph is another good like alternative. And then there's some people that just keep like an Excel sheet or like in yeah. the notes tab and just do like old school, uh, just a list of like books they read. Yeah, so there's no like digital place for your notes because all your notes are like in your book, right? Well, I do. Um, so after I, I finish your, book, your social media, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the reason I started my newsletter. So every week I read a book and kind of pull out three lessons I learned and then three ways to apply it. So that way I'm kind of, you know, yeah. keeping myself accountable. And then I'll just like copy and paste those notes and keep them on Notion. Uh, so, you know, I have like a whole li- list on Notion of like, here are like all the books I read. Um, and then here's like the three lessons I learned from it. And then three ways like you could apply those lessons. Uh, so that's kind of like my digital uh, reader's notebook. Yeah. So, so you must reference like your content a lot, right? <laughs> like what you've posted, you do like just search it up. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then when I want to like, you know, review the notes of a book or go back to it, or I'll have like something that would happen in life where I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of read about the, in this book and this book might be helpful to like go and review it. So it's definitely a good way to have, uh, like your notes. And then what I like about the physical note-taking process is that the books become the notes themselves. So I could just go into my library, pull out the book, flip to the back cover, and then there are the like, lessons right. and actionable advice. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a helpful way. And then, um, yeah, if you want to transfer it to like Notion or if you want to have like a physical journal where you write down, you know, the notes and like lessons, that, that's another uh, popular thing people do. Mm-hmm. Okay, Alex. So now I'm going to ask for some book recommendations. So if we'll start general. So if you could choose like top three must read books that our audience should read, what are those top three books? I have to go with uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Just like great communication, social skills type of book. Mindset by Carol Dweck. It talks about how to have like a growth mindset and like how you know, if you're not good at one area, that's just because you haven't practiced it enough and you can get better at it. Uh, so that was really like an eye-opening book that actually um, another uh, management professor who went to Harvard Business School recommended. So I was like, okay, I trust you. So that was a good one. And Atomic Habits is another great one by James Clear. So it's like the number one best-selling nonfiction book for the past couple of years for good yeah. reason because like yeah. super actionable, great stories. And like all of us have habits that good habits we want to build and like bad habits we want to break. So if you just read those three books this year, uh, your life will probably change. Okay. I mean, this is similar, but slightly different. But what would be the top book to read if you want to become more successful? This is a great book, uh, The One Thing. It's all about how, yeah, any topic or project you're working on, there's usually one thing that is kind of like, you'll get 80% of the work done and just like 20% of the effort. 
Uh, so you want to find out what is the most important thing that you should be working on right now. And then if you just work on that, everything else will solve itself. Mm. Um, so for me, it's like, I need to read these books so that way I could create content about them. Mm-hmm. That's some important work. Yeah, because the, the I create the content, the audience grows, I get more like newsletter subscribers, and then I get more like uh, course sales. Um, so like that's the one thing. If I stop reading, that that domino like gets stuck and nothing else like happens from it. So yeah. you want to ask yourself, you know, if you're a YouTuber, it's probably like recording the YouTube videos because you know if you're not uploading anything, you can't you know edit anything and you can't like grow your audience. So you really want to ask yourself what's like the most important thing I should be working on right now, and then if you do the one thing you don't have to worry about all like the hundred small things going on um, because you're getting like the vast majority of the work done. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great productivity book. And like you could apply that to like er any area of your life. Okay. Um, What about the best relationship book that you've read? Because you mentioned you got into that as well. There's a really good book. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I think John Gray was author of that. It's not super based on science, but a lot of his, like a lot of his strategies have been like proven later on. If you do want like a scientific relationship book, any book by John and Julie Gottman, they run the Gottman Institute, which they have been literally studying relationships for like things like 50 years or some like crazy number like that. They wrote this great book for guys, uh, What Women Want, or um, A Man's Guide to Woman. I think that's what it's called, <laughs> Man Guides to Woman. And that's like super helpful as a guy um, and just talks about like, okay, here are what the studies say. You know, here are like some stories and lessons behind it. Uh, so as a single dude, uh, that's like a great book. Um, but if you're like a, you know, part of the female audience, I think, uh, men are from Mars, women are from Venus or a great book. Cause it shows you dif- the differences between how men communicate and women communicate. Like I learned this, you know, being in a relationship for three years, like guys, they kind of want that alone time. He calls it like the cave time to like think and digest and like be by themselves. Women, they want to talk about what they're feeling and what's going through their mind. And they don't exactly want solutions. They just want to talk through what's going on. And that's how they kind of process information. Mm -hmm. So just seeing the differences between how men and women uh, process information and how they communicate uh, was super helpful. So highly recommend those two books. Yeah, that one sounds very relevant. I'm, I'm me with my boyfriend. We're always talking about how we communicate differently, and we, are, yeah, it, it's, it's always a topic of communication. Actually, how we're so different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about health? Uh, maybe you could share three books because health is a big category. But must read health books. There's a great book, Ikigai, that studies people in Japan because they have like the highest concentration of sedentarians, the people that live to 100 plus. And it talks about what are the habits of these people that are living to 100 plus. The book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker, because like sleep is probably the most important uh, part of your life. Like if you're not getting good sleep, every area of your life and health drops dramatically. Like, you know, you could go, I think it's like three months without food, three weeks without water, but you can't go longer than, you know, I think the longest someone went without sleep was like five or six days. And then you like die if you don't get sleep. Mm. And then uh, Peter Atia's new book that just came out, Outlive. Uh, that, that's another great book. Uh, it's a bit it's a bit thick, but he covers a lot of uh, valuable information and topics about like here are the five most common ways people die, and then here's like how to avoid it. So, outlive, uh, icky guy, and why we sleep. Okay, great, love it. Thanks. I'm I'm like taking notes. <laughs> Literally, I'm planning to like add these books to my list. Yeah. Okay, what is the weirdest book that you've read that you really enjoyed? <laughs> If anything comes to mind. Yeah, there's a good slash crazy book called The Forgotten Highlander. So this guy was a World War II soldier. And I don't know if he was the luckiest person to ever live or the unluckiest. Mm. So World War II, he was drafted into war, you know, unlucky. He got captured by the Japanese, unlucky. He was like prisoner of war for two and a half years. And he talks about the crazy story of how like he survives. And then he gets transported on a ship and that ship gets bombed. So then he's out on sea for, I think, five or seven days, like just floating out in sea on a raft. Uh, so also unlucky. Then he gets found uh, lucky, but it's the Japanese again. And then they move him to like a different labor camp. And that camp was like a couple miles away from Nagasaki. But he literally saw the atomic bomb go off. Uh, and then he was uh, rescued a couple of weeks after that because the war ended. Uh, and he ended up living quite a long time. I think he, he got into like his 90s or something like that. But it's just an absolutely crazy story. It's like yeah. after you read a book like that, it's like you can't complain about anything. Like right. if your foot hurts or like, you know, you have a hard day at the office, you can't complain. Like this guy, you know, he was a prisoner of war for like two and a half years. Like th- he didn't shower that whole time. 
he, you know, he lost like, you know, 80 pounds or something like that and just had to eat like rotten food to survive. But it's also like super inspiring. Like that's how powerful like your mind is and like how powerful the human will is. And that's just like a super motivational book if you view it in the right way. Yeah, that's an incredible story. Do yeah. you prefer reading books about these types of stories over watching movies or do you enjoy both? I, I definitely still enjoy like watching movies, especially if they turn the book into a movie. Uh, that's like another fun strategy you could do. You know, if there's a book you love, watch, uh, you know, read the book and then watch the movie and compare the two. Or like, you know, I, I love the movie The Great Gatsby. And then, um, you know, so then I bought the book to read about it. And then I like, I, I love the book. Uh, so that's like a fun way or activity you could do. Yeah, yeah. Because the books go so deep, right? With the story. They give you so much more. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so you have a book called Learn to Love Reading, which shares yeah. quotes to inspire people to read. What is your favorite quote from the book and why? So I think it's, it's by Naval Ravikant. He has a lot of, he has a ton of great like reading quotes. But I think it's uh, read what you love until you love to read. Mm. So it's like whatever you love reading, whether it's like fiction books or nonfiction books or comic books, it's like read that uh, until you love to read because then you'll start expanding to different areas. So like I remember as a kid, you know, I loved reading comic books and like these uh, fiction books and that, you know, uh, it took a few years, but then eventually I went to like nonfiction and now I'm reading, then I went like productivity and self-help. And then uh, I'm sure in the future it's going to go into like philosophy mm -hmm. or like going to check out like classic books. So I think the most important thing is to develop a passion for reading and it doesn't matter how you do it. Just, you know, read what you love until you love to read. And then uh, the whole world that kind of opens up for you. Love that. Um, I wanted to ask earlier, and I forgot to ask, but do you have like a suggested technique for reading? For example, for nonfiction, some people are like, oh, read the table of contents first. Or like, like you know, some books are so dense where they give so many examples and stories. Do you always, like, do you read everything or do you skip over? And Do you have like a strategy? Yeah, so I would say the more that you read, the less that you can read. So if you read a lot of psychology books and then you hear like, oh, this guy's talking about the marshmallow study again. It's like, oh, I read that. Mm -hmm. or this guy's talking about that. The paradox of choice and like that gene story is like, oh, I read that. And that way you could kind of like skip over those stories. Or like I was reading um, this great book, Indistractable by Nir Eyal. It talks about how to not get distracted. And then he has a chapter of like how to stop your kids from getting distracted. I'm like, well, I don't have kids. So I could just skip over that chapter. <laughs> right. So if it's something is not like if a chapter is not relevant to you, you kind of skip over it. Or if you read that story before somewhere, you kind of skip over it. Or yeah, if, if it's like if it's like a really thick book, I would say go to the table of contents and then look at the chapter titles and see like okay, what's like relevant to me? I call it like surgical reading. Mm -hmm. Like you want to figure out, you know, you don't want to cut off the whole body. Just go out like what area do you want to learn about and then jump to that lesson and then read that one chapter like. There, there's some books I read. I bought a textbook about like uh, studying and like how to take notes. And they only have one specific chapter about uh, nonfiction books. So I just jumped to that chapter, read that chapter, and then I didn't read the rest of the book because it just wasn't relevant to me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's multiple ways you could read a book. And uh, yeah, the more relevant it is to you, the more you should spend time reading it. Uh, but if it's only like a chapter or two you're interested, just read that, you know, get in and out. That's fine yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love this because it changes people's perspective on reading. It doesn't have to be like one page at a time. You literally can just choose what you need, what what's relevant to you, and then leave if you don't need the rest. Yeah, for, for sure. The, the book is here to serve you. Like when you, I tell people like when you buy a book, you're not buying contract to read the entire thing. Like you don't read the acknowledgements at the end. You don't read the index. You know, you don't, a lot of people don't even read like the preface to it or something it's not a legal obligation to read the entire book. And this is like a bad habit you actually pick up in school where it's like, I have to read every single thing because there might be a pop quiz or a test or exam on it. So it's like, I can't quit this book because then I'm going to fail the class. Then I have to like read this even though I'm not enjoying it. So that way I'm ready for the test. But now as an adult, you're free to read whatever you want, whenever you want, however you want. So uh, that's like a big eye opener for a lot of people. It's like, yeah. wait, I don't have to finish this book. Wait, yeah. I don't have to, you know, force myself to keep reading even though I'm not interested in and it's like oh I could actually put this book down and pick up something else so like yeah you can and it's like <laughs> a lot of people are just kind of stuck in the school mindset yep um yeah so school teaches you how to read but not how to be a reader so you just want to keep that in mind yeah yeah like you you realize at this point if you're an adult there's so much freedom you you read what you want you don't read what you don't want <laughs> it's as simple as that it's like a rite of passage all readers have to go through where it's like, okay, I know how to read, but now let me learn how to become a reader. And that's kind of like 
my like main goal and mission. And that's why I share like all these reading tips and advice because yeah. people knew like the power of reading and how beneficial it was. Of course, everyone would love reading. And I hear this all, all, all the time from people. It's like, oh, I'm not a reader. I'm just not into books. It's like, no, you just haven't found the right book or you just haven't been taught how to read well. And that's kind of like, yeah, my mission is like teach people. I, I say like uh, read better, live better. That's kind of like the motto behind uh, Alex and books. I love that. All right, Alex, what are you excited about in your future? Is there anything you're looking forward to? Yeah, so right now, uh, finish up my course called uh, The Art of Reading. So basically, I'm taking like five plus years of reading tips and compacting it into like this uh, self-paced course. It's like about two hours long and it covers like literally anything you want to know about reading, like uh, how to find and filter for books, how to build a reading habit, how to stop getting distracted, you know, how to take notes in book, how to, how to apply what you learn. And uh, yeah, I just figured, because I always get all these DMs and questions, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And now I can just tell people, like, here's every <laughs> single thing I know. You just go to this website, yeah. buy it, watch those videos. Um, so I kind of did like a soft launch for it. I have like 170-ish students. And I've gotten a ton of five-star reviews. So people have really enjoyed that. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to sharing what I learned and like helping more people become readers. And just, you know, whenever I get a message, be like, dude, I really love this book you recommended or, you know, I, I quit a book and like I found this new one and I'm enjoying reading so much more. Like, thank you. It's like, like that's such a nice thing. Um, so just inspiring people to become readers and then helping them become better readers. Uh, that's kind of what I'm excited for. And then uh, maybe one day I'll uh, package that into like a book too. Um, so that could be cool. Yeah, that's amazing. So is, is your course going to be out soon? Yeah, so, so right now I like soft launched it. Um, but if you just go to like my website, alexandbooks.com, you'll find a link to it there. Or if you just follow me on social media, I'll probably be posting a ton about it. Or you could just DM me. Uh, I yeah. read all my like Instagram and Twitter DMs. And uh, yeah, it's called uh, The Hour of Reading by Alex and Books. Okay, awesome. I mean, we, we'd love to share the links to everything that you offer in the show notes here. And I'll definitely l look into it as well. <laughs> I think sure, your yeah. knowledge is amazing. Everything that you share. And I am very inspired to read more now. Um, <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. So if you could leave our listeners today with one final message, what would that be? If you feel like you're not a reader, you just haven't found the right book. And then once you do, you'll realize how much you're missing out on. And that's the point where you're like, I have to become a reader and I want to read so much um, and I, because I could just learn anything about everything. Uh, like for $10, you could literally download 10 years of experience from someone's brain uh, just by reading their book. And then, yeah, read what you love until you love to read. Anything you want to read, fiction, nonfiction, comic books, uh, whatever, so just start reading and then uh, you'll love reading and then you'll expand and you'll just want to read the whole library. And uh, I think that's the point where your life changes um, once you realize you are a reader. So yeah, once you become a reader, uh, life just gets so much better. Love it. All right, Alex, where can we find you online? So if you just search for Alex and Books, that I'm on Instagram, uh, Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn now. And then I also have the website at alexandbooks.com. Pretty catchy, pretty short to remember. Um, so yeah, just search for Alex and Books and you'll find me there. Amazing. Thank you so much for today, Alex. I learned so much. It was so <laughs> information and t like packed with just so much good stuff. So I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for, you know, uh, doing what you do for having me on. I, I know you're a huge reader and I've seen your YouTube videos. So thank you also thank for you. inspiring, uh, you know, people to read and sharing book recommendations. I think what you're doing is wonderful as well. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. So I really appreciate your time. <laughs>